Welcome to Live from the Heart podcast. My name is Anne-Claire Meret. I help beautiful beings feeling empowered to create their lives. I coach, teach, create programs, write books, among other things, and I love it. It took me years of healing and coaching, but I finally found a way back to my heart. Today I thrive and help people thrive too. Everything is happening faster and faster. I feel we are being supported in so many ways. I know we can thrive on a collective level. If you want to create from your heart, you're in the right place. Welcome back for a solo episode. I'm very happy to share with you how I started writing books and how I'm continuing and how it has served my business and how I went through all the challenges and how much I learned along the way. First of all, uh, most of my books have been published in French, so if you look for them, you can find them easily on Amazon. And um, yeah, most of them are in French so far. One of them is in German, and there is soon to come a book in English, How to Succeed as a Wellness Entrepreneur, and that is going to be my first book ever in English. Um, I'm going to tell you the story of how I started writing books and how I continue and I hope it will inspire to share your stories in your books and to share spread the words about really passionate you because it's very important to have more books written out there by people who are connected to their hearts and there is not enough books and yes your book will be valuable and yes somebody will read it and say oh wow it changed my life and um, yeah because books have changed my life and I grew up as a kid I was very much an indoor little kid I didn't like to go out so much it changed a lot because now I love nature but as a child I didn't really want to go out and play with friends and just you know do the things that kids do just um, cycle I, I was not cycling at all like I didn't know how to cycle before I was like 20 something And I was not playing with balls and yeah, I was just indoor and I was reading four books a week and I would go every weekend to the library and just exchange my book, not the library where you buy books, but where you actually borrow books. I don't know how you say it in English. And I just would just, you know, take new, new books with my card and I would wake up earlier in the morning and read books and go to bed late and just, you know, read books. <laughs> That was my thing. I guess reading a lot of books made me also uh, better at writing because I know um, that, you know, like I don't do so much misspelling in French. It's easy for me to find the right words. I'm confident and comfortable with that. Although I think it's also something that you can acquire if you really keep reading and writing even at, an, uh, at a later age. So I come from a small city in France and um, I did not have any connection to be published by a publishing house and I was just, um, yeah, I was just living in Paris. I was, um, what age was I when I started to write? Maybe 33 or something. And I was a naturopathic student. I was uh, working as a student uh, in an organic shop and I met this guy in the organic shop he was a, a regular client and he was a publisher in a big publishing house but he was publishing mostly novels and we were just chatting together so I just recorded in the, in the back of my mind that he was a publisher and he was very friendly but he was not my friend or anything I was just I just knew him and When I finished my studies in naturopathy, I was very curious about the differences between naturopathy and Ayurveda, which is the Indian medicine. And I went into one year of studying Ayurveda just, you know, um, to know the basics of it so that I could compare and so that I could take a little bit of this, a little bit of that for my sessions. And I really loved the way the teacher was teaching Ayurveda. 
And he was very straightforward. He was uh, a bit rude, but fun, in a fun way. <laughs> he was coming from Sri Lanka. And uh, he was getting older and older. And he was thinking about leaving a legacy and writing books. And I told him, I said, well, you know, I can write in French and I would be very happy to support you. And I could be your assistant and I would gain out of that just to spend more time with you and get more knowledgeable and understand how you work and yeah, how you make a difference with your work. And so we spent some time together and he told me that the book that he really, really wanted to publish is a book about, is a book about sinusitis, you know, when you have blocked sinuses. And he said that this is a big problem that if you don't solve it before the age of 19, 20, it's more difficult to, to solve it later. So he wanted to share that there is 18 different types of sinusitis and that there are many ways to heal it with Ayurveda. And I found it fascinating. So I took a lot of notes and I made an, an index and I wrote um, a page explaining the essence of what we would write in the book. And then I went to look for a publisher. And uh, I was very naive and I didn't know how it worked. And I was just excited about the project and I was uh, passionate. And I asked the guy that I knew from the organic shop if he could help me. And then he sent me to a friend of him. And this friend of his, um, Sophie, she's wonderful. She was just starting a new job in a new publishing company. And one of her tasks was to find new writers so that she could refresh the whole, um, um, how, how would you phrase it? The whole um, domain that she was in charge of with new writers. And I pitched the book to her. And she found it interesting, but she told me she was very, very direct. And she said, you know, we need to have enough uh, people buying it so that it's uh, worth it for us. And I'm not sure that we're going to find enough people interested in healing their sinusitis with Ayurveda before the age of 20. So it was very much of a niche. And I didn't know that before. I didn't know how it worked so that they would choose books because they can actually sell them <laughs> enough so that it's uh, there's a good... ROI. And um, so she told me that she was interested in my uh, journey of becoming a naturopath. Why did I become a naturopath? And how many naturopaths were having uh, their practices in France? And if the job is recognized in France? And all of those questions she asked me, she was very curious about it. So I I came back home and I made a note for her. I told her at that time there was about 2,000 naturopaths in France and it's not official, but it's tolerated as long as we, as we stay health educators and that we don't say that we are healing diseases because it's kind of forbidden in France. And she was very curious about the whole thing. And then she, she wrote me back and she said, well, I might be able to offer you something else. What do you think about writing naturopathy for dummies? And so I was like, really? <laughs> you know, for dummies, the collection, which is like black and yellow, and it's super famous. And um, she gave it to me to write. And uh, she asked me to find someone else to co-sign it. And uh, I choose someone that built the um, International Congress on Naturopathic Medicine which is uh, Anne-Marie, and she co-signed the book together with me. And uh, yeah, it was a whole journey of writing the book. It took nine months, and it was very exciting, and it was also very stressful. I was very much doubting myself. I say that um, I think that there was something which was very helpful to me is that I was um, a new naturopath, so I was not really tainted by my own practice from years and years and decades, I was like, I was just freshly out of school, which is great because for writing a for dummies book, you have to write it for beginners, which is awesome because I still had the beginners stage in mind because I was only practicing naturopathy for about four years when I wrote it. So it was a perfect fit for me. And then 
I was very efficient in writing the book and they loved it and I was on time and I had no idea that most of the people, they're not on time <laughs> when they sign a book, book contract. Usually the publishers, they get the book later, but I was always on time because it's important to me. And then they gave me other books and some, some of them because they wanted them, they needed them like in the, in the, um, um, list of books the topics that they wanted to cover so I just wrote them like exercise books about naturopathy uh, full of questions and tips that you can just apply at home and you can write in the book and uh, also about detox they also asked me to contribute to some books from other writers by adding recipes and health recommendation for example I contributed to a beautiful book called the yoga cookbook and I am not myself um, a yogi. I'm not a big fan of yoga, although I, I respect it and I understand why it's serving a lot of people. But um, I like the yogic philosophies, but not the, yo the yoga asana. And uh, I, I worked on this book for months and months. And it was just amazing, just diving deeper into Ayurveda and naturopathy and what to eat and when. It was just amazing. It's a work of art when you write a book and you do it for love. You don't do it for the money because it's not paid very much. Um, I was lucky enough so that I actually was paid when I wrote because I would always sign a contract before starting the book. The publishers would just um, make me a contract after seeing the index and uh, the promise of the book and also maybe one chapter or just a few pages to see how I write and then they would give me money to write the book so I've wrote 11 books published in publishing companies and I for each book I made between 1,000 and 5,000 euros to write the book and when you write a book you get this uh, money in two parts the first part is when you sign your contract and the second part in when they, is when they approve the, the last version of the manuscript. And then if you're lucky, you get royalties on your books. It can take a while, it can take a year or two or three years before the book will bring any money because you have to count first the advance that they've been giving you to write the book. And some of my books don't uh, bring me any money. And some of them brings me a few hundred or a few thousand, but it's not much. Like last year, I had less than 3,000 euros for 11 books. So you don't do that to become rich, except if you keep going, if you keep writing, and then someday it happens. And this is why I'm also continuing, not only for the money, but I believe this is a great way to have an impact in the world and... I want to serve people as much as I can. And just selling books is just so much more affordable for some people than buying programs. Buying a book is more affordable than buying programs. So I want to keep going and keep doing it. Uh, some of the books I wrote, uh, I suggested it to publishers and it's been accepted. For example, uh, with an ex-boyfriend and I, we wrote Raclette and Broccoli. Uh, raclette is a Swiss dish. <laughs> it's melted cheese <laughs> um, that you put over bread or boiled potatoes. It's like super famous in French. And um, with my ex-partner, he was very much into cheese and heavy food and wine and smoking and like really, you know, the French cliché. And I was, I was very much more into broccoli and green juice and healthy living and studying naturopathy and everything. And so we thought together, how could we combine both, both of what we love and explain to the people that life is balanced. So this is how Raclette and Broccoli was born. And it's a beautiful book. There's a lot of drawings and recipes and it's fun. But it's also very easy to grasp because you can understand um, uh, what happens when you mix the grease and the sugar and what to avoid if you want to stay healthy and how to keep a healthy balance within a week it's not something it's not one cheat meal that will make a big difference it's the balance is overall within a few days like how can you keep your balance 
and what it means for you. I had a lot of fun writing this book. <laughs> it was not a great success, which I don't understand because it is really a beautiful book. Yeah. And then I met the owner of a detox center in France. And um, he has this beautiful detox center, which is a retreat center in an old mill. And uh, he used to work in a pharmacy. So he's a pharmacist, like a doctor in pharmacy. And he's also a naturopath, super knowledgeable. And together we wrote The Miracle of Fasting, which is available in French, Le Miracle du Jeune, which is an interesting title because really the book is about detox and about healthy living. But there is one thing which is interesting about publishers is that they choose the titles. And although we fought quite a lot to say it's not only about fasting, we need to find a title which is more, more open, but they really wanted that because um, I guess... Sometimes they just compare to what the other publishers have been publishing, you know, on that topic. And then they want a book on the topic and then they, they try to make it fit. So that's what happened. And this book is a success. Yeah, we sold quite a lot and it's also been adapted into audiobook without us knowing. And I really would have liked to read the book, but nobody told us. So someone else is reading the book. Um, Writing books has been a journey of understanding how it works, really, in the publishing companies and getting to know them better and also understanding the limits of it. And although I have a lot of gratitude of, about my journey because it led me to be um, excellent in writing now and it comes easy to me, at least easier to me, and also it helped me be more... Um, you know, when you write a book, you have to make choices and then you're very confident about what you want to say. Uh, now that I've written so many books in natural medicine, when I need to talk about something about natural medicine, I feel confident because I took so much time choosing the right words, then giving a speech about naturopathy then became easy. And at the beginning of my career as a naturopath, it was not easy because I didn't know which words I was allowed to say which words I should be careful with. And then because I had to choose them very specifically, then it became easier and easier. So for that, it is awesome. And also writing books makes make people take you seriously. And from the moment that I've been published, there's a lot of people who have been trusting me more and uh, choosing me as a naturopath because I wrote books and also following me on social media because the book had an impact in their lives. And it's amazing because it's one more door for people to find my work. And um, yeah, I've received so many grateful emails along the years of people who've just found a book in a library and read it and their life was impacted and then they wrote me and then started to follow me. And you know what? A lot of them then become, became naturopaths. And then they're sharing the good word to the world now. And it feels great to my heart because it feels that we're all connected and we're raising uh, what is possible for humanity. So for a few years, I wrote a lot of books, several books a year, um, because it was partially my income. I was doing sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions. I was doing sometimes workshops about naturopathy or EFT or whatever workshops, detox, fasting, things like that. And sometimes I was answering, I was working for a magazine. I was, um, I was writing, I was answering to the readers of the magazine who would send questions and then it would be published on the last page. It was a fun job. I did it for maybe a year and a half. I enjoyed it until I didn't enjoy it anymore. And then I stopped and I moved on. And uh, so writing was part of my income for a few years. And because I didn't make so much money, I, I decided to, to be very smart with my time. So I would just choose to write quickly, like within two, three, four months, each book. After Naturopathy for Dummies, which was obviously pretty long, it was nine months, like a baby. But the other books, I tried to make them short. And then I would travel and go to a cheaper country like somewhere in Asia. This is where I started to travel a lot. 
I went to Thailand, I went to Vietnam, I went to Bali, I also went to Morocco, and uh, I'm originally, my family's from Morocco, and I didn't get a chance to spend much time there in my life because my parents didn't want to go, so it was a great opportunity for me to spend time there and just write a book. And so I became smart with my time and money, and when I would be back in Paris, this is where all my sessions would be concentrated and my workshops. So I felt that when I was in Paris, I was not losing any time. So it was really great. It was win-win for everyone. And then after a while, after a few years of doing that, I took a break and I, I created actually at that time an online program to help people be published. And a few do dozens of people got their book out. So I'm super happy because now I have in my community, so many people have written their books because of my program, because they saw that it was possible for me and then they understood that it was possible for them. And yeah, it's just awesome. And uh, my program is only available in French, but I've already published it like, it's been like four or five years ago already. And I want to do, I want to do it again. I want to do it again with everything I've learned the past years and I want to do it better. And then maybe I want to create also boot camps where people will come and learn things about publishing and also get some coaching and then some hours to write every single day and being accountable for writing. And uh, yeah, I want to do that in the future. So the, I took a break of writing about health and I dove super like deep into the topic of love because I had a, a really painful heartbreak and then I needed to work on that. So I inquired love. I read a lot of books about love. I was coached about love and I had a lot of experiences about love at that time. And I was looking for answers and I was taking notes in a lot of notebooks. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if someday maybe I'll make a book out of it? and then I found love and I was very happy and it was a happy ending for me to understand that all of my research actually led to creating the beautiful love life that I still have up to now and uh, I asked my publisher if he would be interested in me publishing a book about love it was in 2019 and they said yes so I sold the book to the publisher and I wrote it and then when came the time for editing, they did not really understand my book. And um, there was a bunch of editing done. And, and then they asked me if I could change some stuff. And I said no. And we had an understanding that I didn't want to change the book too much to make it mainstream. And they just let me get the rights back. And then I just published it in PDF on my website I recorded the whole book in uh, on my own computer and it's available in French on my website. And now I'm thinking to publish it on Amazon myself. So I'm considering taking the time to actually edit it because it's been a while since I published it and I've had more experience. And also I can share that everything I've learned is actually still helping me today. It's not so fresh, but after a few years, it's still very much useful for me. And also I took the commitment to another layer deeper because I'm now engaged. And so I want to share the whole journey too. So I'm going to edit that book and publish it and probably in French and in English. I'm very excited. I'm very excited about it. And um, yeah, I haven't then published a book for a while. But what happened is that I was creating a lot of online programs and training and I actually had a great success the past three years. I'll share that in another, in another episode, how my journey to making a million in 2022. And in 2022, I actually wrote another book with a publisher. So it's actually me being back to being published after a few years. And this book is not about natural medicine. It is for, for healthcare practitioners, well-being entrepreneurs, and it is how to succeed as a wellness entrepreneur uh, with a new publishing house this time. And I've learned from the past that if I want my books to be published in several languages, I need to stop selling it in every languages to one, 
publisher in French. <laughs> so this time I told them that they could have any rights except for the English rights that we wanted to keep because I wrote this book with a co-author, Julia Esperance, and uh, the book was released in October 2022. It's a big success. Like We've had so much coverage. We've had so many people sharing about it. And um, I'm very proud of this one because it's been written from the heart. It, it has a lot of great coaching insight, a lot of insights, a lot of um, how you take it from the, from the very beginning and you understand how you can be a successful entrepreneur in the field of natural medicine. And it's, uh, we have so much, pe so many people writing us that they love it. And it's just, it's amazing. And this book is coming soon in English, hopefully in March. I hope if it's on time, it's going to be for March, How to Succeed as a Wellness Entrepreneur. And this time it is self-published. So we decided to work with my coach, Regan Hillier. She has a publishing company called Have It All Publishing. And we thought it would be shorter because they thought we could be translating it within a few months. But it's been already five months, so it's a long journey of um, receiving it each time and, you know, making sure that the translation is good. And so it takes time, but we're getting there. Um. Yeah, and then I have a few more books that I want to write, really. I think I also want to share my story about how I made a million uh, with my business, Live From The Heart. And uh, it's been a journey of integrity and choosing really projects that are connected to my heart and working with people that I love, for people that I love. And I want to share with the world that you don't have to compromise to make a lot of money. You can do all from the heart and with integrity And this is a new paradigm of uh, success for me. I'm, I know so many coaches who've been doing this, um, but mostly in, in English. I don't know so many coaches yet, which makes millions in French. And I'm very happy to open the path so that there are many, many more holistic practitioners which can also make millions. So I want to do that soon. It's actually started already. And um, yeah, in, in English and in French, and I think it's going to help a lot of the, the community. Um, I also want to do more books in uh, audio because I love to listen to audio books. I'm a big reader. Every morning I go to the beach where I live in Costa Rica. I just walk for an hour or two and I listen to an audio book. And then in the evening, I like to read on my Kindle. So I just read but mostly in French. I'm, I'm more comfortable reading in French and listening in English. I also want to be able to provide the, the audible versions. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to find a way to do it. And I'm very confident that I'm going to make space. I choose to make space this year to write more books. I actually started this, this, uh, this week to... I have hired someone new in my team. So my team is about 12 people. And I've never really had a personal assistant before. I've had people working for me in the company and um, super grateful for them. They're amazing. But I've never had an assistant which was actually helping me on a daily basis for my own research and my own, you know, mental workload of mine. And this is great because... Because she's there, I hope I can get an hour more every day so that I can make the space to write and I choose to do so. And I would like to, uh, to tell everyone who wants to write a book that it's, um, it's not super easy, but it's not as difficult as you may think it is. And uh, you can always find people to help you write your book too. You don't have to do it yourself. You can find publishers you can find people to keep you accountable you can have a how do you say ghostwriter yeah that can help you write and you just speak it out you just say what you want to say and then the person write you can have so many solutions if you want to write a book really and you can be published by a publishing house and which is great because then you're going to be in libraries like physical libraries And you can also decide to self-publish. Today, there are so many options to self-publish. And I must admit that 
this is more of my choice today because I'm more of a sovereign being now than I was five years ago. And now that I see that I only own between three and eight percent of each one of my books, I think that it's just a rip off. But it's normal because there are so many people involved in a publishing company and they, they just take so much risks, which every book so that they cannot pay people more at the beginning. And then when you become a famous author, then you're paid more. But it takes a while, except if you're really lucky with your first book that it's a bestseller. But today, being more sovereign and being the entrepreneur that I am, and also because I've already built a community, I understand that um, my next step is self-publishing because then I can own my rights and I can make the money with my books. And I'm really ready for it. Like, I'm excited about it. <laughs> and uh, I was asked recently by one of the p person in my mastermind. She actually sent me an email at the end of the mastermind. And she said she really, really, really wants to write. But she knew that it would not bring, us, bring her at the beginning of her writing journey. Maybe not a lot of money. And she was asking me how come... I'm still committed to write books, although I've written already 11 published and with with like in libraries and two on my website, so 30 in total. She asked me, how come I stay committed to writing more books, although it's not bringing me so much money yet? I told her, I said, I know it's going to work. I have faith. And... This is one thing. Faith is one thing. And then the other thing is service. I'm just serving. I'm serving the world. I'm not only doing it for the money. I'm doing it because it's helping a lot of people. And because a book is such an awesome thing. I fell in love with books when I was a child. I love them so much. And because I, I, I live abroad, it's difficult for me to have so many books. Already I have so many bags that my fiancé is not super happy with me. <laughs> But that's okay. I have a lot of books in my Kindle. And um, yeah, I just love them. And when you read a good book and then you, you give it to a friend and you say, oh, I think it's going to help you. And there's a lot of healing through words. And I think that words are ones. And that if you use the right words in your head and the right thoughts, and if you, if you can shift your perspectives, then you can change your life. And I'm very committed to helping people as much as I can, changing the way they think, changing the way they see life. And if my books can help them, then I'm the happiest woman in the world. Yeah, this is it. And because I'm doing it with passion and I commit to it, I have faith that in the future, actually, I know it's not only faith, I know that I have one or several books uh, in the upcoming years, which will be a great success and I will make a lot of money with them. Yeah. So this is it. That's what I wanted to share. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share it around you. You can also reach out to me. And um, in the future, I would like to uh, redo my online program about writing because I've had more experience now. And uh, I also would like to create retreats and boot camps to help people write their books because I know sometimes being in a setting with other writers and being really accountable and like this is very powerful. So this might come in the near future. Yeah. Have a beautiful day and um, yeah, talk to you soon. Bye bye. Thank you for your presence. If you've enjoyed this episode, share it, like it, save it. You can follow me and connect with me via social media and my website, simply with my name, Anne-Claire Meret. See you soon with more content from the heart.